was six afraid of seven, Justin, because seven, eight, episode nine of the Monday Night Wars. I am Chad Talks, and joining me as always is J Mac Gaming. Episode nine of season two, Chad. Do not forget this is a brand new season, a new era of the Monday Night Wars, Chad. Wars! We are here to go home to Over the Edge 2000, Chad. Are you excited for this? I am very excited for this. I'm more excited for your show. You know, you know, I'm I'm excited for my main event. I'm always excited for WWF, but your show has the a capability to be an all timer. Will it happen oh. with your booking? Are you? No. Oh. But it has the capability oh. on paper to oh. be good. You were complimenting me and then it turned into an insult. Well, it's a it's, a, it's a, Yeah. You dick. Let's go into the show, though, our pre-show matches. We have two pre-show matches here, Chad. Two. And you're going to see a correlation between them. Uh, Carlito defeats Kendall Windham in 934 with a big boot. Good for Carlito. That's good for Carlito, indeed. And then Epico defeats Barry Windham in 810. And this did a lot better than the previous match because Epico <laughs> can work, brother. Jeez. Apparently. Low weeds. Oh, we start off the show, though, Chad. Last week, it was announced it'll be Future Shock, Tyson, Lesnar, and Orton taking on Stasiak, Austin, and Rock. Chad, that's, that might be the biggest match of the save. No, it's not. Uh, it's not. I don't, think, I, don't I don't think so. I don't think so. But my having Mike Tyson have his in-ring wrestling debut <sighs> happen is that's huge by itself. And Brock Lesnar's here. You know, he's an absolute freak. There was there was an insane bidding war between millions of companies to get his rights. Randy Orton, you know, a generational talent. This is a big match right here, Chad. And this is just the highlights, the recaps. This is showing off Mike Tyson's in-ring boxing career highlights. This is showing off Stasiak winning the belt. This is showing off Lesnar winning, you know, a uh, NCAA wrestling championships. This is showing Randy Orton. Um, you know, this is, <laughs> this is... It shows Randy Orton training with his father, WWE legend. Bob Orton Jr. I should bring in Bob Orton, Chad. Yeah, but then there was no promo here. It's just, a, you know, a, a, a pre-pay-per-view hype package. Because we are six days away from over the edge. We start off, though, with our opening match, Chad. John Bradshaw Layfield... No, this is King Ikea Steel. <laughs> I was like, where? <laughs> Walking down to the ring, uh, Ikea representing Liger this match, or not representing, but like being there for his friend and they Steel being out there for JBL. And it is Jushin Liger in JBL. And a decent little match there. Jushin Liger defeats JBL on 1135 with a Liger bomb. Yeah. Hey, you know what the difference between a Liger bomb and a power bomb is, Justin? What? Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> in, in, in Revolution, Jim Ross was like, Say there, Excalibur! Do you know the difference between a lager bomb and a power bomb is? And then Excalibur like, said yes and then explained it. And then Jim Ross went, Ah, oh, we were just telling. I was just testing you, young buck. Right. And he was like, No, they went on earlier in the night. I hate it. <laughs> it was funny. Just, whatever. <laughs> we have Mark Henry warming up backstage. You know, He's got a main event match tonight, Chad. It is. Mark Henry teaming up with interim tag team champion Stash and Stud to take on Ken Shamrock and the uh, defending Raw tag team champion Sultan Joey Matthews Firehouse. That is going to be an explosive six-man tag main event, Chad. We move on. Lesnar Norton getting still uh, getting more ring time in. They take on Big Boss Man and Tommy Rich. And, uh, you know, they get another win. Lesnar pinning bra uh, Big Boss Man with an over the head, oh, over the he overhead, belly to belly. <laughs> over the head and over the edge. I'm going to pray that Mike Tyson can work because these guys still aren't there. But <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there slowly but surely, getting a more in-ring action, more experience under their belt. We move on. Christian Cage, he's uh, 
I don't know if this is later on, I think. I don't remember the order of which I book his match. But he's uh, backstage. He's being interviewed by Kevin Kelly, and he's putting his name in the basket. He says he will win the King of the Ring like he beat Kurt Angle. You know, this is not just a fluke. This is not an underdog story. He's the actual real deal. And at next month, all throughout next month, and then at the pay-per-view, he says he will show everyone why he is Christian Cage and why he will be King of the Ring. I mean, you know, if I, if this was a gambling, you know, his, his, his odds would be pretty pretty good, Christian Cage, you know? He's got some big wins lately, so, I mean, it's not like he's just some Joe Schmo. Right. It's not, he's not some everyday kid on the block, you know? Christian Cage. We move on. Billy Gunn takes on Mark Merrow. Chad, Billy Gunn gives me another win against Mark Merrow. Last year, Mark Merrow was an underdog story in the King of the Rings. Made the final, I think, eight Maybe Final Four. I think it was Final Eight, but still, very good for Mark Merrill. But uh, he will not be in the, the... Actually, no, you know what? He is in the King of the Ring now that I'm looking at the bracket. He is in it. Good for Mark Merrill. Maybe I should change for that. for Mark Merrill. Who's he facing? You know what? This is for Mark Merrill's spot, and he lost it. Oh. Oh, no. Billy Gunn's Mark now Merrill. in the, Billy Gunn's now in the, the King of the Ring. Sorry. Didn't realize oh, you no. were... Mark Merrill losing his King of the Ring spot live here today. Oh, no. No one else had to defend their spot. <laughs> well, Mark Merrill did. Taka Michinoku uh, defeated Spike in 830 with a Michinoku driver. Uh, Was this we'll... for Spike's money, uh, King of the Ring placement? Do you think Spike had one? Sur <laughs> I'm surprised Mark Merrill had one. Uh, yeah, but, um, you know, Taka, Taka gets a win. Will Taka be in the King of the Ring? Who knows? You'll have to find out next month. Oh, speaking of next month, Ricky Banderas takes on Jason Knight, Chad. The world's sexiest man taps onto the La Patriota. And then Ricky Banderas says he'll be in the King of the Ring, Chad. Ricky oh. Banderas in the King of the Ring. Who? Wow, who would have thought? Who would have seen this coming? But Ricky Banderas, TNA legend, is making his way to the King of the Ring. People are chanting. Who the F are you? Why are they singing that? <laughs> I don't know who this kid is. Well, there he's Ricky Banderas. <laughs> you gotta watch the product, brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> Rock and Austin. Um, you know, they're they're going over game tape. Yeah, their their friendship is, you know, it's on it's on the it's on a fence right now. You know, it's they're teetering tottering between friends and still, you know, hating each other. They got a, they picked up a big win last week against the Comebackers. They team up again and over the edge. You know, but these guys they they fought a lot. You know, they've had three big matches in the save, but now they they have to team up together. In a match against <coughs> Mike Tyson and Future Shock. We move on. Kurt Angle says he will win the King of the Ring. He says, not that loser Christian Cage. You know, this was a fluke that I lost at WrestleMania. And that King of the Ring, if he's if I'm if he's so damn unlucky to get in the same bracket as me, I'm gonna show to everyone why he was such a fluke and I'm gonna tap him out in the middle of the ring. One, two, three. Maybe not one, two, three, because of the tap out, but I'll break his freaking ankle. Kurt Angle. Chen, would you put money on Kurt Angle winning King of the Ring? Yeah. Good. Ah, and then Christian Cage gets his match. You know, he hears that. He hears that promo from Kurt Angle. And that he uses that as motivation to take on Steve Carino. Steve Carino, new picture for him, Mr. Carino himself. And uh, he loses to Christian Cage. I see. Uh, really, I think Christian really needed that that uh, inspiration here. Any win helps. Or, yeah, he needed it. You know, a little... You know, a little, little shit talk will always pump the adrenaline up. And Christian Cage, decent little match right there. And um, we move on to our main event right there. Chad, Mark Henry, Stash and Stud, taking on Shamrock and Firehouse. When Firehouse, uh, they lose. Mark Henry pins Joey Matthews in the faces celebrate to end the show going in to, to, to over the edge. Got an 83. It's a go home, baby. That's what we do here. We don't need to risk any injuries going in to over the edge, Chad. Short little Raw, you know. But, but the Raw side of uh, the pay-per-view right now, if you do not remember right now, Chad, I think we went over thing, everything today. Um, Henry Shamrock, Ace Steel King, Iakea, Firehouse, 
stash and stud. And then the, the main event the, of Over the Edge, Stasek, Austin, and Rock taking on Brock Orton and Tyson. Raw's got a Raw's got some pretty decent matches, but um, maybe not as good as Nitro's matches. Let's get into it. Bam! It's the Nitro time coming at you hot and fast. Oh, what's up, everybody? That's the WCW theme song, of course, and we are here with WCW Monday Nitro. Who picked that song? I did. It's from D'Lo. It's from D'Lo's. New oh, band. that's D'Lo's Brown. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> D'Lo Brown. You know, if he's not going to win matches, might as well. Might as well be the, for the, show. the theme song of Nitro. <laughs> oh, Justin, explain this pre-show match. Well, Chad, I would love to. All right, I thought of two great guys in the ring, and I was thinking about how that match would go down. And then I booked Jeff Hardy and Louis Piccoli when I was done thinking about two good guys wrestling. So, well, I mean, <laughs> this didn't do bad. No, because Jeff Hardy's good. I mean, got... Louis Piccoli had a 47. Yeah. Madonna's boyfriend, yeah. Looney Spicoli. Yeah. All right. We move on to your pre show match, Chad. My pre show match. Uh, it had decent wrestling as well. Minoru Suzuki beats Disco Inferno. Suzuki getting 64s now. Hell yeah. Look at only, him getting only, over. Only took a couple weeks of him dominating fucking Evan Courageous, and here we are. Oh, I think we've cracked the code. And we start off Nitro with a match just because, you know, we're. Unlike the other show that came on Monday, we don't need a long promo. We start with the action. We didn't even have a promo. Because we're action. Because we're action. We had a hype package. <laughs> well, it's we don't a the promo. Only hype... You have well, a paper. Only... You get your pay per view panel out of your bitch. We're looking. We're looking here. This tag team of Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles. They're calling themselves the hype package, and here we well, go. They're calling they're... themselves <laughs> Limitless. What are you talking about, Chad? <laughs> yeah. But they're the <laughs> shut up. Uh limitless <laughs> battling Mike and Mike. Then in a decent match, AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels defeat Mike Quackenbush and Mikey Ripwreck. When AJ Styles pinned Mike Quackenbush with a Styles clash. You don't know AJ what... Styles was head and shoulders above everyone else. You don't know what's going on anymore. I never know. <laughs> AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels cutting a promo. AJ basically talks saying that, you know, Limitless is you know, Christopher Daniels himself. They're the future of the company, right? And you have to win the battles before you can win the war, all right? And there is a war coming, and it's between the Syndicate and Limitless. He's not worried. You know why? Because he's the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. And this man standing next to him, He's a man that he's been friends with for years. They've literally come up in the business together. He says, this man, he's like the, he's like the, the, the saving grace, the angel of WCW. He's going to rise up and take this company to the heavens, the promised lands. And he's honored to do it. With, uh, standing beside him. He says, you know, Daniels, AJ Styles, Kidman. Rey Mysterio, RVD, Chef and Hoovy. Hell, even Chris Jericho, a, a, a cruiserweight who has made a name for himself. These guys right here, we are the future. And the future is limitless. And that clash of champions, and then he's interrupted by Shen, Shane Helps. And uh, he goes, blah, 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 blah. Gosh. Maybe we should give you a. Uh, maybe we should hire script writers so they can write something new for a change. Oh my gosh, AJ, I am so sick of hearing you and everyone else say the same things every single week. What we should be talking about is what you do after Clash of Champions because you are about to be. Oh, I don't know, maybe about ten pounds lighter because I'm going to take that championship from you. And then, you know what? Maybe I'll defend it against Christopher Daniels. Maybe I'll clip this angel's wings and he'll fall to the ground. Because I'm no longer being held back. This is the start of the Helms dynasty. This is the start of the Shane Helms show. At Clash of Champions, AJ, I'm going to kick your ass. And it's going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. 
We have a decent match. Taz defeats Rick Steiner with a Taz suplex or the T-bone suplex. Well, daddy does, Chad. Daddy does. Decent yeah. little match. Look at, look, look at Taz. Look at Taz. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, look at him. Look at and him. Diamond Dallas Page comes out. He's cutting a promo. He's a shit talking Taz. You know, he's like, listen, I'm sure you're very, you know, listen. A couple weeks ago, you were the surprise member of Limitless. Ooh, ah, everyone was so excited. And then what have you done since? Oh, that's right. You haven't been in matches. Once again, Taz is all hype. All, all, all smoke. No substance. Meanwhile, the syndicate, every single week, we're on TV. We're making a name for ourselves. And at, after Clash of Champions, two of us are going to be world champions. And Taz is like, that's right, and it won't, won't be you. You know, you're going to come at me and talk to me about being, about being a, a disappointment. Diamond Dallas Page, you've been a disappointment your entire time you've been in with WCW. How many chances have you had in the championship for the world title? I lost count. And yet every single time you drag your ass out here and you try to wrestle and compete and you had to join a group that one guy be, you were feuding with not two months ago. You want to talk about pathetic Diamond Dallas Page. I'm looking at the most pathetic man in WCW right now. And I'll tell you what, you want to Come down here. You want to get in my face? You want to talk crap to me? I'll tell you what. I may not be a champion, and you may not be a champion, but I can give you a championship ass kicking. How about this? Clash of champions? You versus me. Let's see how, let's see if you can back up what you're talking, all right? Because listen, you may be the syndicate, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, Taz is going to kill you. Justin, on the go home, we have a last-minute Clash of Champions match. Diamond Dallas Page versus Taz. Taz is gonna kill you. Meanwhile, backstage, Raven, Daniel, and, the, and Mike Awesome. They're in a dark room. Raven's like, Daniel, Clash of Champions. You go one-on-one -on -one against Bret Hart. And listen... You were the one that made this match. All right, and I got mad. And I told you that if you lost, there'd be consequences. And look, a couple weeks have gone by. Level heads have prevailed. All right, listen. I, 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 I'm calm now. I'm not as mad as I was. Because I'm the one that makes these decisions about this group. Not you. But listen, I admire, I admire the guts, the balls. That you, that, that you have to challenge Bret Hart. And you know what, Canyon? Listen. I promise you. I'm giving you a Raven guarantee. That you're going to retain that championship by hook or by crook. Any means necessary. You will retain that ch championship. And Canyon says, Raven, I know I'm going to retain the championship. And listen, thanks, but but no thanks. I I don't need your guarantee. I don't need your promise. I don't need you or Mike to get involved in this match. I'm going to do this on my own. All right, because listen, I took this match because I know I'm ready. I've been on the roll of my career. I'm the guy who made Mick Foley and Sting just faces in the crowd. I've been on a roll. And I've been doing it while representing this group. The flock. You should be proud of me. And yet here you are, mad? Raven, listen. At Clash of Champions, I'm going to make that heart tap out. I'm going to retain a U.S. championship. I'm going to show why the flock is the best there is, best there was, and the best there ever will be. And I'll do it. On my own. That's that promo. Yes, it is. Speaking of promos. Oh. Yes. After that, Bret Hart taking on Mike Awesome tonight. And in a good match, Bret Hart defeats Mike Awesome with a sharpshooter. Mike Awesome penalized for poor momentum. Oh, no. 
Owen Hart comes out immediately. He's at the ramp, and he's walking down the ring, and he goes, Brett, listen, that was a good match. I got to give it to you. That was a good match, but we are at the... We're at the Go Home Nitro. We're in Birmingham, Alabama. And you know what? I think we're going to have a little one-ups, one-upsmanship. All right, you took on a tag team partner of one of your opponents, your opponent at Clash of Champions. So I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to wrestle one a, a partner from my opponent at Clash of Champions, Randy Savage, when I defend this global championship. And I'm going to see who can have the better match, me or Brett. Let's find out. They have the and same the answer is Brett. They have the, the same answer is, What do you oh, mean? The answer, <laughs> they I, thought Brad in, I, I, thought, I thought Brad in 86. Nope, 85 for both. The answer was it was the same match. It looks like uh, Jamie Noble was penalized for the same thing. <laughs> Let's see, what he was penalized. Look, He's penalized look, for a poor gimmick and his manager is a face. Oh. And Owen got penalized for being pissed off. Oh, why is Owen pissed off? Because you hired both the World Warriors and he hates both of them. Oh. Well, they won't be around for much longer if that makes you feel any better. Still hired them. <laughs> oh, fair enough. That's okay, Owen. You'll get over it. <laughs> right on. We move on. They literally did this. The answer was they both did the same. <laughs> Ray Mysterio cuts one final promo about how, you know, his entire career, he has scratched and clawed to get to where he is now. And here he stands, the world champion. He's worked so hard for this, and he will not give it up uh, easily. It doesn't matter who Kevin Nash brings. He could bring the Syndicate. He could bring the NWO. He could bring the Click. He could bring God himself. It wouldn't matter because Rey Mysterio is going to beat them all. He's going to prove why he is the greatest champion in professional wrestling. He is going to show why he does belong here. Because Kevin Nash, if you want to take this belt from me, you're going to have to kill me. Because I won't stay down. I'm going to get up. I'm going to kick out of everything you give me. And just when you're wondering and you're asking, what more do I need to do? Can I beat Rey Mysterio? I'm going to answer with no, you can't. After I hit you with a 619 and pin you 1, 2, 3. And walk out of Clash of Champions still. The WCW World Heavyweight Champion. We move on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, the group that are calling themselves the Job Squad. They are backstage. Actually, we show a clip of them earlier today. They were out in public. They were at a, a Burger King getting food. And they were like, hey, you know, as the Job Squad, we have the opportunity here to really make a name for ourselves. And I can't think of what better way than, than, than to make a statement at the last Nitro before Clash of Champions. Stevie Richard says, you're right, Val. We need to take on a group to show how good we are. And what better group than a group that has a world champion in it? Mike Barton says, yeah. And then Alfred Snow says, and that's why I think in the main event, the job squad, as our first job when we beat Syndicate, the main event. So, Syndicate, if you're not too scared, we'll see you in the main event tonight. Jesus Christ. Oh, job Squad versus Syndicate, Justin. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Oh, we have champion versus champion, but this match, Justin, ended in a no contest. There was interference. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> this, uh, Kevin Nash was in the crowd, and he distracted Rey Mysterio. And Reverend Devon took advantage of the distraction from, D uh, from the, the ref and Rey Mysterio and Bubba, and he low-blowed Bubba. There what was an, interference everywhere. Calamity an ensued. But he, but he low-blowed too slow because as he was low-blowing, the ref turned, and that's when he called it a no contest. He was like, oh, hey, we're, we're ringing the bell. Ended in a no contest. Then after the match, Reverend Devon continues to beat up Bubba. And Rey Mysterio couldn't help because he ran through the crowd to go get to Kevin. Rey Mysterio's trying to help out everyone. He's got, he's got his hands in a lot of problems here. Yeah, he's got a lot, of, a lot of hands in the cookie jar. And our main event, it got an 81, Justin. In a decent match. 
<laughs> uh, the Syndicate defeated, redacted, and right to censor when Kevin Nash pinned Stevie Richards with a jackknife powerbomb. Yeah, that was a match. <laughs> that was the main event of Nitro for the go home. And then after the match, Rey Mysterio, he finally gets his hands on Rey, uh, Kevin Nash. He hits him with a 619, hits him with a frog splash, and then stands over him with the world championship held high. Is this going to be the closing image of Clash of Champions? We'll have to find out. I hope so. Got an 84. Well, we're falling apart. Got an 84. <laughs> this has been a bad month for both of us. I knew this was going to be bad. I mean, I wanted, I, w- I was trying to go for the safest, low-risk Nitro before the pay-per-view. Yeah. So. Hey. Actually, I had every champion in, the ma- in a match, basically. Yeah, you did have your main event. <laughs> safest way. Let's have Ray, Brett, Owen, and Syndicate all wrestle tonight. And Papa. <laughs> You're a goofball. All right, and we'll AJ, s- for that matter. Yeah, I will see you guys for SmackDown. Oh, hello. We are here with SmackDown. I am Chad, and I'm here with Justin. Justin, how are you? What the hell? What, what is this? I'm ready for SmackDown. Ooh, yeah. Is this Macho Man with Steven Regal? <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't know where you heard Steven Regal. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Just wanted, to, just wanted to try out a fun little voice. I don't know. How do you feel about Ric Flair getting his new protege, Rhino? to absolutely gore Ricky Steamboat a couple days before the pay-per-view. I love that. Ric Flair, you know, and he, and he gets in, in Steamboat's face and says, I'm sorry, I love you. And then <laughs> Rhino gores him. Unbelievable. Rhino's here, Chad, and he's Ric, Ric Flair than HMR. Can Steamboat overcome, his, overcome a gore to win at the pay-per-view? I'll have to find out. And our other pre-show match, Roadkill defeats Chase Tatum a couple days before Roadkill's tag team defense against Shawn Michaels and Brian Danielson. We start off the show. No, we don't. We got Chad Collier defeating Low Key. Low Key's here on SmackDown, Chad. Atta boy, Chad. Chad getting a big win. Chad, how do you feel about Chad? Love Chad. Love Chad. We start off. his name wrong, though. No, he doesn't. Triple H and Eddie Guerrero, Chad, the rematch. We haven't really seen these. I mean, we saw Eddie, what was it, last week where Eddie uh, Eddie and Edge got the big win over Triple H and Road Dog, And then we saw, um, then we saw, you know, Triple H, you know, demand Shawn Michaels picks one or the other guy. He either picks DX or he picks Brian Danielson. But, um... You know, the story has been over there. Triple H, you know, his his mind's not really on the title right now. It's with his boys in DX, and Eddie's going to, Eddie says he's going to use that to his advantage. He's talking backstage, you know, with Edge. He says he's going to use that to his advantage, you know. His, his heart's not on the, his heart's not on the prize right now. And, you know, Eddie Guerrero, you know the Guerreros. They lie, they cheat, they steal, Chad. He's going to do anything in his power to come home and win that belt like he told everyone he was going to when he got drafted with SmackDown. We move on our opening match of the night. Caprice Coleman and Mystico take on Nova and the Blue Meanie. And Caprice Coleman and Mystico defeat, you know, the, the BWO, as some would call him. And uh, Mystico, dominating performance, got a 72. Capol- Coleman with a 53. Huge match right there for Mystico. He is the number one contender going in to the Light Heavyweight Championship match. Speaking of which, Tyson, duh, comes out. Hits him in the back of the head with the belt. Sneaks out of the, the ring before Coleman he re- even realizes what's going on. Tyson Dole, again, laying out the light heavyweights. Laying out. Duh. Duh. What a douchebag. Eric Bischoff uh, regrettably informs. He calls Paul White in and he says, uh, I, you know, well, Paul, we, you know, we had that, you know, we had that plan of you defeating guys from CMLL every week, you know, to prove yourself. And, you know, you looked dominant last week against Cybernetico, but unfortunately, uh, you know, it was, look, I'll be honest with you, Paul, Universal 2000, a major star in CMLL. We saw him a couple weeks ago. He missed his flight here to Philadelphia. And um, 
Look, I mean, you don't, Paul, you don't have a match tonight. You're not on the card. I, I can't, I can't fit you in tonight. But how about this? I'll make it up for you on Smack uh, at Over the Edge. We'll put you in a match, Paul. We'll put you in a match, a one-on-one -on -one match. And uh, I got a, I got a surprise opponent for you, Paul. I think you'll enjoy it. And if you can win, you know, that'll edge you even more closer to, you know, maybe you'll be the number one contender if you win that match, Paul. Maybe. And Paul's like, yeah. He's like, Eric, I appreciate everything you've done for me so far. I just wanted to prove to you and prove to myself and prove to the WWE. You know what? Fuck those guys in the WWE universe that I could be a dominant world champion once again. We move on. PJ Black and the Big Rig Fig takes on Test and Kid Cash, Chad. Big Rig. The Big Rig Fig. Big Rig Fig uh, rolls up Kid Cash. Ooh. Big win for uh, the Big Rig. Uh, unfortunately, Test and Kid Cash don't work well as a team, which stinks a little bit. Godfather and Gene Snitsky, they take on each other one-on-one -on -one in chat, and Godfather taps out Mr. It Wasn't My Fault, Gene Snitsky, in 811 with an STF. The, but it was his fault. It was his fault tonight. He did tap out. Godfather, you know, Godfather... Had a, had a title match last week. There's rumors that he might be in the King of the Ring next month. Who knows what the future is? In a, you know, Godfather could be number one. He could be world champion. He's on a roll. He's on a roll. Father's on a roll. <laughs> uh, we got our we got a match right here. We saw these guys go at it in a tag team match last week. Tonight, though, Edge defeating Road Dog in sixteen sixteen with that missile drop kick, Chad. Ooh, a missile drop kick, you say? Yeah, the the missile drop kick. It is on. Love to see that. You Love know, that. That's you know, you think of the greatest finishing moves of all time. You think of Jake Roberts' DDT. You think of Okada's Rainmaker. You think of Edge and his missile drop kick. Of course, I don't know what else you would think. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett is here on SmackDown chat. Oh, Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett. With a new picture. New picture, new him. He's still nursing his injury. His, what was it, swollen paws or whatever? He fought a hedgehog. <laughs> swollen paws. <laughs> <laughs> he says, oh, hey, uh, you know, Jeff Jarrett just checking in, you know. I'm still nursing this injury. He looks at his hands. They're both bandaged, as, bandaged up. It looks like he's got t balloons as hands right now. Um he says Jeff Jarrett, and, you know, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to miss King of the Ring, you know, one of my favorite tournaments here in WWF, and, uh, but I'll be back, you know, and you know what they say, double, you know, Jeff Jarrett, he's the hottest free agent of all time, you know, he's, he's got offers, I mean, look at, look at this, look at this sheet right here, I got offers from this company, this company, this company, that company, let's cross that one out, uh, WCW, nope, cross that one out too. Let's Smackdown, Raw, oh CMLL. We got, we got, we got companies offering us the bag to come over there and wrestle for him. But uh, you know, Jeff Jarrett, he's gonna make up his mind when he's still in, in, in a couple months or a couple, you know, who knows how long Jeff Jarrett's gonna be out. But when he comes back, you best be damn sure he's gonna go for the world championship because he is the hottest free agent, Jeff Jarrett. We'll move on, Jeff Jarrett, you know. Call it a shot. He's still hurt. Who knows how long he'll be out, but the hottest free agent says he's coming for a world title, Chad. Oh, man. Our co-main event of the night, it's Harlem Heat taking on former tag team contenders TNT, Tony Mamaluke, and Amazing Red. And a decent match right there. Booker T and Stevie Ray get a win. Oh, Harlem Heat, baby. Harlem Heat. They will be in the king of the ring, so uh, big match right there. Shawn Michaels comes into Brian Danielson's locker room. And Danielson's fully expecting Shawn Michaels to pick Triple H and Road Dog. He's like, it was a pleasure working with you, Shawn. And Shawn's like, hey, what are you talking about? I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to be with you. Triple H, you know, something's gone wrong with his head. I don't know what it was when he was gone on injury. I don't know what is gone. But he's not the same hunter I know him. As I know and love. And that DX is not the same D-Generation X I know and love. So... You know what? It's time for a new start. Brian, in a couple days, we take on Road Rage for those tag team belts. And look, I think you got it, kid. I think we're going to come out and we're going to be the, the the greatest SmackDown tag team champions of all time. And Danielson's like, what do you, what do you mean? I thought you, 
But Hunter's world champion. You don't want to be with him. It's time for a new. It's time for a, a new page in my life. This is season two, Danielson. It's a new era. Ah. Oh. He could still call himself the American Heartbreakers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our main event of the night, Eddie Guerrero and Ultimo Dragon have a hell of a match. Eddie Guerrero defeats Ultimo in 2025 with a strong splash. And he gets on the mic and he says, hey. He says, Hunter, did you see that? Did you see that dominant performance? I have the stamina to go all night if I have to, all right? And I... I'm, there's not a, a doubt in my body that at the end of the night at Over the Edge, you're going to go home now without a stable, without stable mates, without DX, and without a world championship. We'll see you at Over the Edge, Hunter. And that is SmackDown. Big 90. Big 90 for a go home. Big 90. Big, big 90. Big fig getting a big win. Oh, yeah, you love to see it. All right. We'd love to see Thunder coming up right now. Here we are. We're back in better than ever with Thunder, the go home to Thunder. Clash of Champions is in the rear, or not the rear view mirror, in the driver's side mirrors. But, oh, that wouldn't work either, would it? Ah, Clash of Champions about? is at the next exit. Yeah, but before we do that, we got to go through Thunder tonight. Ted, are you okay? No. What's wrong, buddy? I don't know. I'm sad. Why? I'm not sad. I'm amped! This pre-show match got a 50. It got a 59, you blind bitch. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Chavo and Conan. Yeah. This also got a 59. Yeah. This also got a 59. Hell yeah. D-Lo wins, D- though. D-Lo won. Yeah, Thunder's the best show. You're right. <laughs> Oh, we got an angle. It's Scott Steiner and Rob Van Dam. They're cutting promos on each other. Uh, 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 hyping up their upcoming championship match. Just some final bars, you know, to get to, uh, to, to get on one, of, one another, you know. Uh, Scott Steiner vows to, uh, to not only beat Rob Van Dam, but to, uh, you know, to, to silence... Uh, to silence all this talk on Rob Van Dam having uh, you know, quite the the run since coming to WWF, and Scott Steiner's here to put an end to that. He doesn't like that Rob Van Dam's been getting all this attention. He doesn't like that Rob Van Dam has been a cruiserweight champion. He's been a United States champion, and now he's had an opportunity to be a Universal champion. He says, "Cool your pies." Cool your pies. Rob Van, Rob Van Dam. You know, he says, "Listen, I'm gonna beat you." Clash of Champions, and there's nothing you can do about it. Because there's nothing finer than Rob Van Dam. And then Steiner gets pissed. That doesn't make sense. Oh, Joel's catchphrase. Oh. And in a poor match, oh. Abyss defeated Louis Spicoli with a shock treatment. Yikes. This should have stayed in the Abyss. Yeah, yeah that wasn't great. That match sucked. Oh, speaking of things Sucking. that suck. <laughs> speaking of things that suck. The job squad. They're here. They said, listen, you know, we lost the syndicate on Nitro, but we still have the opportunity to make a name for ourselves. And Thunder, this is where we do it. We're taking on another group. Another group that we're going to beat uh, uh, handedly. That's right. The job squad. We're taking on Limitless tonight. In the main event. Yeah, okay. Good for them. We got a tag team match. Scott Hall and Stardust. Taking on Build Em Up. Danny Doring. In a decent match. Hall and Stardust defeat Build Em Up and Danny Doring. When Stardust pins Danny with a bulldog. Yeah, I mean. Look at this tag team. <laughs> Chad <laughs> running on fumes with ideas right now. Well, look at that tag team. Yeah, DeMont and Danny Doring. <laughs> Big Foley cuts a promo. Uh, Colin Stardust, a piece of shit. <laughs> you all right, Chad? What's going on? He says, he says, you're a piece of shit, and I can't wait to kick your ass. And all the fans here in Birmingham, Alabama, can't wait to see it either. <laughs> Both shows running in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, I'm very good at not changing. 
your shows. <laughs> oh, Owen Hart cuts a promo. He says, as you have noticed, I do not have the global championship. That's because <laughs> in Japan, in between Nitro and Thunder, I lost the belt <laughs> to Kenta Kobashi. And listen, everyone's now wondering, what does that mean for the global championship match at Clash of Champions? Well, guess what? I am invoking my rematch at Clash of Champions. But here's the thing, all right? I'm not going to lose again. I'm going to become a two-time global champion. And then Randy Savage's music hits. He says, ooh, the sensei is here. And I noticed that Owen Hart lost his global championship because Owen Hart's a little bitch. Oh, yeah, and I also see here that Kenta Kobashi is the global champion, and, you know, you're going to run this ring match back, and that's all fine and dandy, but I want fair and square my opportunity at the global championship, so uh, I think it's only fair that the match is a triple threat match. Kenta Kobashi versus Owen Hart versus Randy Savage, a dream match. And uh, Owen Hart, you know, he, he says, well, you know what? You're right. It should be a triple threat match. And after I beat Kenta Kobashi, it's going to be even better because I'm going to be also kicking your ass. A triple threat match, Justin. Kenta Kobashi, Randy Savage, and Owen Hart. Yeah. I mean, the, the, that's shitty that it happens, but it might lead to a good match. Yeah, I think it's funny. I think it's funny that it happens. And we got a tag team match. Bubba and Cutie Suzuki taking on Reverend Devon and Debbie Malenko. And then a decent match. Reverend Devon and Debbie Malenko defeated Bubba Ray and Cutie Suzuki when Reverend... Don't oh, no, Reverend Devon pinned Cutie Suzuki with a <laughs> Dudley death drop. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'm... Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. Oh, no. And she got a broken nose in this match. What does that mean for the championship match? I'm sure she'll be fine. She can work through a broken nose. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Sylvester Stallone, he's throwing shit everywhere. He's like, damn it, she broke her nose! <laughs> and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you, you, hey, what's up, Sylvester Hulkster here? Listen, I've been quiet lately. You know, I've been, I've been, uh, you know, I realized if I want to do my job as the assistant general manager. I need to to watch the product. So I've been spending the last week and or so catching up. And I gotta say, brother, there should be no reason why China isn't in that uh, women's championship match. But listen, good for you, brother. Because if listen, if Debbie Malenko can't go, and hopefully she can, but if she can't, Jack, then I think I know exactly who we can have uh, put in her place. And he's like, Hulk, China will not be in that match. And you know what? Just for even suggesting that. 25 person battle royal that she's wrestling in for that 24 7 championship it's now a 30 man got any other brilliant ideas hulk wow brother what the hell's been your problem lately man did your movie flop you've been really upset brother and i don't think that's i don't listen i don't like it and i'll tell you what i think we and you need to talk about your attitude and what you've been doing lately and i think we should talk in person and so that's why Next week, brother, I'm gonna be, ah, uh, I'm gonna be at Thunder to talk to you directly about your attitude. Just alone, he hangs up on Hulk Hogan. Hang up, and then he just continues to just trash his locker room or his office. He's so mad. We we'll move on. In a tag team match. Leparka and Lasharka taking on DNA, and then a decent match. DNA defeated Leparka and Lasharka in 10 away when Alex Wright submitted Lasharka with an STF. There you go. Decent little match right there, Chad. Decent little match. Yeah. Oh, boy. And they say, listen, we are booked to participate in that now 30 man battle royal. I mean, to be honest, I think anybody who's not booked at the pay-per-view is probably going to be in that match. There's 30 goddamn people in it. Oh, my God. But listen, we were told by Sylvester Stallone that if we win, or more importantly, if China doesn't win, it would be a very special reward in it for Team DNA. But listen, China, no offense. One of us is going to walk away with that 24-7 championship. Because... Boss is happy. We're happy. 
DNA, about to be the hired hired guns of Sylvester Stallone for this battle royal. We move on. Oh boy. Oh, a six-man tag. Minoru Suzuki, and the faces of fear, taking on Ron Killings and the Disco Team. And in a decent match, Minoru Suzuki in the Faces of Fear pinned Disco Fury, Disco Inferno, and Ron Killings, and Minoru Suzuki submitted Disco Inferno. There you go. Big little match right there. I told, I told you I'd have Disco Inferno battling Suzuki at Thunder. Oh. And we have a backstage promo. Jericho and Ahmed, they're in catering. They're eating a champion's meal. They've got all the fixings. It's not like what they usually eat in catering that everybody else eats. This is the best of the best. Jericho has a personal chef. I cooked them all kinds of cuisine, and they're enjoying their big meal. They said, listen, we're not booked, right? but that's fine because we don't need to be on the show every single week. We're the best of the best, and we're going to be the best of the best after Clash of Champions when we beat Sick Boy and Low D. Now, in the meantime, Ahmed, let's enjoy this wonderful meal. And the chef comes back out. The chef says, excuse me, uh, you guys forgot dessert. And Jericho looks up, and it's Low D, just as a chef. And he's got a cake, and he throws the cake in Jericho's face. And Ahmed gets up, and he's mad as hell. And then Sick Boy and Low D, they start having a food fight backstage just in a catering. This is the, the final go home to their big match, and there's a big catering brawl. Song, the big catering brawl. We move on. Main event time, Chad. Ooh. Main event. Uh, ooh. ooh. Oh, God. Yikes. Oh. Yikes. Well. Okay. Well, you know what? This one's on me. And <laughs> a decent match. Kidman, Rob Van Dam, and the Hardys defeated the Job Squad when Rob Van Dam pinned Alfred Snow with a split leg moonsault. Well. That was a nice little experiment, and it's nice to know we never have to do it again. Oh, God. What oh, here too? oh, I don't know. Oh, it was a short, yeah, it was a short angle. That's why. Yeah, and Steiner beats up Rob Van Dam. Oh. And th- 84. 84. Oh, in what fucking world. Thank you, Jericho. <laughs> Thank you, Mick Foley and Hogan as well. Thank you, thank you, Hogan, Foley, and Jericho. Hey, not a bad. Okay, it was. Yeah. It could have been worse. I mean, it could have been worse. Debbie Malenko could have it, died. Instead, she just breaks her hand. No, that, that certainly would have been worse. Yes. Yeah, we'll see you guys for the paper. We would have been having a Debbie Malenko tribute show. That would have been a turn of events. Well, yeah, we'll see you guys for the pay per views over the edge. Uh, what's the other one? What's yours? Clash of Champions. Uh, Clash, Clash of Champions. Dunce. Sorry. We'll see you there.